Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have another saga about neighborly relations in our first story. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Pretty lawn, petty mo. My neighbor hates me. Full on swears at me when he sees me, tried to bully me if I'm alone, sends nasty letters, hates me. Why? Other than because he's unhinged, it's because I'm a woman who won't kowtow to him and doesn't think he's the king. Oh, and because we share property, and I disagree with a lot of his actions. It's a whole thing that's getting resolved pro-revenge style over years. Background. Neighbor loves his lawn tractor. He loves to mow. Instead of spending the evening with his wife and kids, he mows. Instead of spending holidays with his visiting family, he mows. And it's not as if he's crunched for time. He spends most of his day at home alone, in his garage, not working. But as soon as his family needs him, off he goes to mow. Revenge number one, the mowing. Neighbor tried to send me a bill for mowing a strip of our shared property. The strip is not required to be mown by any laws, nor does a lack of mowing degrade the property value or the natural enjoyment of the land. He just likes to have it mown to his standards and on his schedule. So instead of taking my offering of, let me know how frequently you prefer it being mowed and answering with anything reasonable, he decides to tell me, don't worry your pretty little head about it. And then three years later, sends me a bill for all the mowing he has done. First, his hourly rate is 160 pounds per hour. Second, he asserts that I only mow it once to his every five times. Third, he states it takes him two hours to do so. Fourth, I owe him for machinery wear and tear on a machine he doesn't even use. Total invoice is about 2,000 pounds for a year. There are no contracts in place that allow him to charge me, and his estimates on time and frequency are woefully incorrect. Obviously, I ignore this ridiculousness and use it against him in my pro-revenge saga. I also decide that I'll enact my revenge. So I start the season by mowing the strip of contention as soon as the ground is firm enough to handle a tractor. Grass isn't even into growth phase yet, and I scalp it. First shot's fired with first mow. Then I wait. Since he's such an impatient buffoon, he mows it as soon as it's no longer manicure perfect. Takes a fortnight since the scalping, and he gives it a wee trim so it's just right. His normal schedule would be mow it about a week later, but I can't let him get into a routine. So three days later, when I know he's home, off I go to mow it, and again, scalp it right down. And again, I wait. He catches on after a few rounds and tries to outweigh me, but IDGAF how long and mangy it gets, not my invisible standards being unmet, so he waits until he can't stand it any longer, and he mows it, to his precise height. Three days later, I scalp it. Always three days, rain or drought, three days. He's so angry about it. He's angry because I wait long enough after his mow that there is a visible difference. He's angry because I cut it so short that he has to wait for it to grow. He's angry because I've messed up his schedule, and he's angry because he sees me do it. He's an angry person in general, but his expression of pure hatred when he sees me mowing is like sunshine to me. And our next story. Threatening my pay? Enjoy your nuked careers. I used to work in hospitality in a metro known for its obscenely huge tourist population. You know, the city built around a mouse. I was a manager for the recreational division of the hotel. So one day, my boss, who we'll call Mary for the purpose of this story, comes into the shared manager's office and starts rummaging around for something and strikes up a small conversation about work-related minutia with me. It's important to note she's actually two tiers above me, but was acting as head of the department while searching to replace my previous boss who recently quit. Great guy, by the way. Huge loss to the company. As we're talking, she abruptly stops and says, By the way, you need to shave your beard. You look like a terrorist. Haha, -ha. funny joke between colleagues, right? Nope. I'm half Indian and do look Middle Eastern and have been taking this kind of crap since middle school. Plus, we're not close at all. So I reply as calmly as I can muster, Hey, I get you're trying to be funny, but on my end it comes off as pretty ignorant, so I'd appreciate it if you chilled out with this stuff. To which Mary retorts, Oh, I'm ignorant? We'll see how ignorant I am during your annual review. 
and proceeds to walk out of the room in a huff. My jaw dropped so low I could taste the floor. You would think it was an easy fix, right? Go to HR and all. She's made rude comments like this before. I've refrained from contacting HR because I didn't want to be petty, but now she's threatened my pay, and that's no bueno. So I go to HR like a good boy and tell the HR director, who we'll call Boyd, I explicitly ask him not to mention it to anyone, just to log it away in case someone else reports something similar and he can establish a pattern of behavior. Well, Boyd decided that he simply must talk to Mary about it. I stress again that I am not comfortable with it since she strikes me as the vindictive type. No good. He promises me there will be no retaliation and tells me he'll contact me later for a statement, which I thought was weird. Why not make a statement now? And that was that. About a week goes by and I follow up with Boyd because I've been getting some less than pleasant vibes from Mary. Nothing substantial but odd. When I ask what happened, he tells me, well, it appears that Mary was just joking, but she has agreed never to say anything like that again. Your annual review is not in jeopardy. Okay. At that point, I decide to just let it go. Fast forward a month, a new director for our department is hired, and surprise, surprise, it's her roommate and former front desk supervisor, Joe. Okay, cool. I'm used to the nepotism because the entire hotel basically operates that way. Whatever. Never had an issue with him. Didn't know him too well, but I'm happy our little hive has a leader again. Man, how effing naive I was. From the get-go, he's unpleasant. Snide comments left and right, changing my schedule at the last minute every week, or scheduling me on my established days off, giving away opportunities to my peers that I'm never considered for, making me take improvement classes none of my peers have to take. All strange, but up to that point, nothing earth-shattering. Until one day, I get written up out of the blue. First ever write-up, by the way, for refusing to inform a superior of leaving the premises, referring to me leaving the day prior without literally saying the words, Hey Joe, I'm leaving for the day. 1. This is not an established policy, written or otherwise. When I say I'm leaving, it's a courtesy. 2. I know for a fact my peers don't always say when they leave, personal observation, and was corroborated by them after asking around. 3. Knowing my peers aren't held to the same bogus standard and have never been written up for it. I know this is a direct shot at me. My review is effed. Best part, Joe let it slip that Mary asked for me after I left, and when it was found that I was indeed gone, she requested the write-up. That was F up number two, lady. Number three came when Boyd decided to cover his own butt when I approached him with all the evidence pointing to retaliation and discrimination in the workplace. I learned he never properly documented his discussion with me or Mary, and that he's been basically playing the whole effing thing by ear. I decided to write my long past due statement, then and there, turn it in, and email a picture copy to the corporate office. I tell Boyd that I'm sorely disappointed about how he handled the issue, and he responds by accusing me of dramatizing the whole deal. He was very flippant about the whole thing, rolling his eyes and everything. Okay, buddy, I see you now. So finally, we've reached the revenge. After some time, I scrounge up all the evidence I can, my write-up, my co-workers' write-up records, with their permission, company policy manuals, my schedules for the past month, including the bogus classes only I was made to attend, my co-workers' schedules, witness statements from peers when Mary has said other demeaning things, and a few other items. Next step, I tell off Joe because F him. I make sure he's very angry when I leave. You'll see why later. After crossing my T's and dotting my I's, I resigned with a two-week notice. That night, I type up a letter to the EEOC and attach all my evidence. I mention Mary, Boyd, and Joe by first and last name. I hint that I'm pondering a lawsuit. A few weeks later, I have my girlfriend call my old job pretending to be a potential employer asking for a reference. I give her the extension to Joe's desk. As predicted, he slanders the ever-loving crap out of me, straight up lies, even got my resignation date wrong, along with my attendance record all verifiable, helping my case. I tried the same trick with Boyd, but he was smart enough to point my GF in the direction of a third-party reference dialer the company is supposed to use for these kind of calls. I proceed to send my old employer, corporate included, a cease and desist letter with a transcript of the call, hinting I may sue for slander. The result. Some time passes, and the other day I'm at the bank with my girlfriend. I get a call from an old co-worker, 
I missed the call, but I resigned to call him back later. Less than an hour later, I get five to six calls and texts informing me that Mary, Joe, and Boyd were all fired the same day and walked out of the building. Mary cried. Apparently, the corporate office was contacted by the EEOC and launched their own internal investigation, matching their records with my evidence. The EEOC sent me a return letter with the company statement, which was fallacious as F due to their interviews with the Three Stooges, but nonetheless, I suppose they decided it was easier to nip it in the bud and sack their butts to be safe. Karma may be a B, but in this case, she had nothing to effing do with it. And our last story. Won't let me onto your property? Okay. I run a gardening business. I also do a fair bit of reticulation work. I have several real estate agents that I do regular work for, whom because they are good clients, I waive the call-out fees for. The agents know this and appreciate it. Most reticulation companies charge $80 call-out fees. I get asked to fix the reticulation at a property. I'm warned that the tenant is a little odd and to ring him the day before I arrive. I do this, but there's no answer. I swing past the next day and the tenant is sitting out in front of the house. Hi, I'm here to fix the sprinklers. No, go away. It's not going to cost you anything. It's all organized through the owners. I don't care. You're not coming onto my property. I'll call the police if you try. That's fine. I'll come back when you leave. I was informed that the tenant would be moving out in a month's time. I then rang the real estate agent and told them what happened. Yeah, he's been doing that to all the tradies we send there, was their reply. We'll send you again when he moves out next month. Just be sure to charge two call-out fees and we'll take it all out of his bond. In short, a man makes life difficult for real estate agents by refusing to let tradies into his house. Real estate responds by telling tradies to just bill them the call-out fees twice and I score an extra $160. The real estate told me he did the same thing to an electrician. God knows how much two times of those call-out fees were. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.